Hi there, I'm Richard Black. I'm a counselor here in Christchurch, and I also head up the organizations Mind Health and Strength for Strength Counseling. Today, I want to talk with you about helping your child's emotional well being during this COVID conquering time. Now, there's a lot we could look at, and I see that there are a number of great resources online already. So I just want to cover four key points to build and maintain your child's emotional well-being. The first is communicate that you're in control for them. Now, what I mean by that is give your child a sense that, that you've got this, that you've got them. I mean, we may not know what's going to happen, but your child needs a sense that, that you're in control for them and you've got them come what may, that you will help them navigate whatever does occur. Now, a tip with this is anytime you talk about these events, do so in a calm and matter-of-fact kind of way. You see, children are highly sensitive to the emotions of others around them. And they're also highly sensitive to whether there is a sense that there is a big person in charge of things, taking responsibility for what happens or whether there is a big person they can rely on who feels stable and trustworthy, whether it feels like there's someone steering the ship. Because, of course, for a child, when they don't feel like you've got this, when they feel like you're not in charge, that uh, they can't rely on you, well, then they get a sense that they have to take responsibility, that they have to be in charge and in control. Now, this can look like a couple of different things. The child may turn inward and, in fact, simply try to look after themselves and control themselves. So they may become more insular, more withdrawn during this time, believing that they cannot rely on others. Or they might turn outward, trying to control the situation for their big person. Because they care for their big person, They may take responsibility for the way their big person is feeling. They want to cheer them up. They want to make them feel okay. They may want to look after them. They may feel like they have to take responsibility for their siblings. They may feel like they have to take responsibility to make sure everything's going well. In other words, they may feel like they have to be the adult here, which of course is just too much responsibility for them. Children need a sense of security. And that comes, among other things, as we give them the sense that we're in charge of the bits that are just too big for them. I remember soon after the earthquakes, when I was getting our middle child back into her own bed. She was nine at the time. And she said to me as I'm tucking her in, she said, Daddy, but what if there are aftershocks during the night? And I said, Okay, honey, well, let's look at that. What if there are aftershocks during the night? I said, have we had aftershocks since the big earthquakes? Yes, she said, we have. And I said, and during those times, has anything fallen off the wall? Or has anything happened to mummy or daddy or your brother or your sister? No, she said. So I said, so even though we have had aftershocks, we've actually been okay. Yes, she said. And I said to her, take a look at the bed you're in, because she was sleeping in a metal framed bunk bed at the time. I said, this is like a metal cage that you're sleeping in. You're practically in a sa- the safest place in the house. Oh, she said, I didn't think of that. <laughs> no, that's my job. And I said to her, and honey, we've got our plan as to what we need to do if there is another earthquake. But I want you to know, if there is something unexpected that happens, that mummy and daddy will come to you. We will tell you what to do. We will help you through this. In other words, we're in charge of the bits that are just too big for you. And with that, she settled down and went to sleep. Our child needs to get a sense that we're in control of things for them, that we've got them during this time. Now, of course, if you have worries and concerns, which would be so understandable, I'd simply encourage you to turn them outward to turn to your trusted friends for support from them, that you don't turn your worries towards your children who just aren't mature enough or equipped enough to be able to handle them. Our children need to have a sense to get the very clear message, the very overt message, 
that we're in control of things for them, that we've got this and that we've got them. A second key point here is listen to your child. Check in with them about how they're feeling. Of course, check in with them about what they're enjoying about this time, what they're looking forward to about this time, but also see what's not so good for them. You see, if a concern gets suppressed or stuck, it can easily become anxiety. So it's important to give them an avenue to get this out. So help your child give voice to what they're feeling. And then listen to them in a calm, caring, matter-of-fact kind of way. I'll often recommend that you use the pattern empathy, reassurance, action. Now what I mean by that is after you've heard what your concerns are, what your child's concerns are of what they are feeling, well then empathize with them. Validate and affirm what they are feeling because it is so understandable. The next thing is reassure their concerns where you can. In the same way that I tried to reassure my daughter's concerns about aftershocks. And thirdly, find something constructive for them to do that will help them with their feelings and with their emotions, or move them into something else that is actually helpful for them to do. This is a pattern I outline in more detail in my children's book, There's a Happy Moon in My Side. The third thing to do is limit media coverage. Now, by all means, keep informed, keep up to date with what's going on. Just don't marinate in this stuff. You see, the news items that I have seen have the big words COVID-19 blazoned across the screen in big emergency red letters. And in the background, there's images of viruses bobbling around, all of which really isn't that helpful emotionally. And we hear stories of how things are changing and we hear from different people and their different emotional responses all of which our child may need our help with to interpret it so they have a helpful understanding and so they have a helpful response to it. And when we limit the media coverage, then it's, it's not all that swimming around in their mind and in their emotions. And finally, create consistency and structure. Routines are so important. Routines help to communicate security to your child as they have a sense of rhythm, as they know what to expect day in, day out. And so with this, I would encourage you to have regular wake-up times, regular bedtimes, regular meal times. These act like the, the bones of the day, as it were. And in that, have regular times where you connect where you might eat together as a family, where you might play family games, have family fun times, make Lego together, have family devotionals. Also, give your child an age-appropriate responsibility, a chore that is something that they are expected to do each day. Now, now that acts like the structure for the day. That acts like the set pieces of the day, as it were. Uh, but of course, there's the broken play of the day. And so you might like to create a, a checklist, a tick list, where it can have things on it like play with your brother and sister for 30 minutes without fighting, or read a book for 30 minutes, or whatever is age appropriate for them. It might be do something physical for the 30 minutes or whatever time it needs to be. Go for a walk around the block with us as a family bubble. It might be practice your musical instrument or do some schoolwork or whatever. And of course, have in that the fun time that they can have, that they can choose all by themselves. So in this, communicate that you are in control for them. Listen to them. Limit the media coverage and create consistency and routine. Kia kaha, my friends. Remain strong. We will get through this.